What's a tip that everyone should know which might one day save their life? Story 1. If you're lost in the woods, don't leave your location. People searching for you will start at your last known location, and you'll just make their job harder by expanding the search area. If you must leave, follow water. Early cities and towns were usually founded near a source of water. If you follow a stream you're more likely to run into civilization. Usually downstream, but really depends where you are. Story 2. FAST. Which is a way to identify if you or someone else is having a stroke. Facial drooping, a section of the face, usually only on one side, that is drooping and hard to move. This can be recognized by a crooked smile. Arm weakness, the inability to raise one's arm fully. Speech difficulties, an inability or difficulty to understand or produce speech. Time, if any of the symptoms above are showing, time is of the essence, call the emergency services or go to the hospital. Story 3. You're more likely to be attacked in a transitional space. Going into and out of buildings, cars and especially between the two. You let your guard down because you're thinking about what you're going to do when you get there, not what you're doing right now and not what's going on around you. Stay alert, stay safe. Story 4. Shortness of breath can indicate heart problems. My father told our family doctor about it and they sent him for tests. They found problems and did open heart surgery. It saved his life and I want more people to know about this seemingly unrelated symptom. Story 5. If you've been stabbed, leave the sharp object in the wound until it can be treated by a professional. Sometimes the knife, stick, or whatever is the only thing sealing the wound so you don't bleed out. On a similar note, if you for some reason get stabbed in the eye with a stick, cover both eyes. Moving your injured eye can cause more damage, and it's impossible to move your eyes independently, and if they aren't covered you'll instinctively look around with the uninjured one. Story 6. If you're in a crowd and there's a possibility of a human crush. Go with the waves of people instead of against it, and, when possible, go backwards and diagonally to get out of it. If you're rigid, you'll get pushed over and trampled to death, and you absolutely don't want to get to the front. Story 7. As a lifelong Floridian, I see this all the time here and elsewhere in the news. In the event of a disaster, stay the F away from downed power lines. Don't walk along the street with them, don't drive your car over them, don't take selfies with them. They are thunder noodles and have been known to kill. Story 8. If you find yourself close to an electrical hazard, like a downed power line, keep your feet together and carefully hop away from the danger. The electric differential between your legs can fry you if the charge is high enough. Ever wonder why sometimes there are whole herds of animals that die from a single lightning strike? This is why. In most cases you should shuffle your feet slowly instead. You may need to jump in some cases, if so it is crucial to start and end with both feet together when you break and resume contact with the ground. Always shuffle or hop very carefully, as a fall could lead to death. If you are in a car that is safe, do not leave the car unless it is necessary to do so. Story 9. If you should be foolish enough to crash your car into water, find a sharp object. Attempting to open the door is fruitless until the pressure equalizes. Break the window glass and swim out that way. Story 10. If a nuclear bomb is dropped near you, seek shelter immediately. Close all windows and doors and turn off anything that circulates air, such as heating, AC, and fans. Take off your clothes, shower well, shampoo your hair, but do not use conditioner, which could trap contaminated particles in your hair. Stay inside for at least 24 hours, 72 if you can. Don't go outside for any reason, not even to look for family. If you do this, nuclear attacks are surprisingly survivable. So many people think they don't need to have an emergency plan because they think they'd automatically die in a nuclear attack. Don't be like those people. Story 11. Don't mix household cleaners. Especially don't mix bleach with ammonia. That'll produce a toxic gas that can kill you. Apparently this still happens frequently. The thing to do if it happens to you is to get the F out the place where the mixing happened. Get to fresh air. Don't pee on a cloth and breathe through that. Get the F out. Story 12. It's very inadvisable to carry condoms in your back wallet. The irregular cycles of heat it will experience due to being in and out of your pocket can cause the latex to expand and contract multiple times before actual use, severely compromising the reliability. Story 13. 
If you ever get kidnapped and are in the kidnapper's vehicle, wait until you are around a lot of traffic and pull the steering wheel to make the car crash. People will immediately go to see if you are okay and call emergency services. You're going to be injured or killed whether you cause an accident or go to the second location anyways. Might as well pull attention to yourself. Story 14. Have a glass breaker seat belt cutter in your car. A lot of knives come with both on them and can be as cheap as $15 to $20. Better to have something you don't need than to need something you don't have. Story 15. Do not jump in the water to save a drowning person unless absolutely necessary. Drowning people tend to clasp on their rescuers and drag them under with them. Find something to throw or a some sort of lifeline. If a drowning person does grab on, they will essentially try to climb you like a ladder or push you under to get the leverage to get some air. It's instinctive at that point and impossible to override. If you're being pushed under, just swim down out of their grasp, come up a little ways away, and try to re-approach. Story 16. We had a sheriff come in to talk to us about active shooter situations. Going through that training taught me a ton, but the one piece of advice I got that stuck with me was, have a plan, and every day go through the plan in your head. This will help you to not panic if it actually happens. Never try to engage but if, God forbid, you must defend yourself then you swarm. Be savage and do not let up. Their due process was done when they decided to bring a gun into your building. Can't state enough how much they advise to never engage but have a plan for everything. Story 17. If you feel an earthquake start and the shaking doesn't piddle out after 5 or 10 seconds, assume it will be big and take cover under something sturdy or run outside where there is no power lines or bits of building above your head. If there was an earthquake at the beach you're on and you see the water receding away, run to higher ground immediately because a tsunami is coming. If you're in a town near water and see the water in ditches or rivers flowing the wrong way, seek higher ground because a tsunami is coming. Story 18. If you're caught in a riptide, swim parallel to the shore until you get out of it. Don't try to swim against the current. Story 19. You can perform the Heimlich maneuver on yourself by making a fist and pushing upward quickly on the space between your rib cage and navel. You can lean on a piece of furniture and quickly thrust your abdomen against the edge. I've done it twice. Still alive. Story 20. If you drop a loaded gun, do not try to catch it. Let it fall. Modern firearms do not just go off for like no reason. Trying to catch it makes it easier to accidentally pull the trigger. Before people go off about antique guns, unless you are at the range, your antique needs to be in its case or you are an irresponsible gun owner. Modern firearms do not just fire off like that. Even high points. Story 21. Vomiting can make a potential just leave you alone. If nothing else works, put your finger down your throat, kids was in college and was separated from my friends one night that we went out drinking. A car with five guys in it pulled me into the back seat across three of the guys laps. Even drunk I remembered my father telling me that vomiting could stop. I looked around at the guys and asked, where in here can I throw up? They made a screeching halt and threw me out of the car. May have saved my life. Story 22. Don't pick up items on Craigslist or Kijiji alone. You never know when the item you head out to pick is actually just a lure. Been in uncomfortable situations and have always made sure to never go alone anymore. My life isn't worth a boxed set of DVDs. Story 23. If someone grabs you by the throat from behind, don't try to pull away. Lean backwards into the attacker instead to throw them off balance and jab them in the stomach wherever you can with your elbow as you do it. If you've gotten this far and enjoying the content, please leave a comment of your own story. We'd love to make a video of them in the future. Story 24. If you're ever in a potential life or death situation involving another person, don't be afraid to fight dirty. It's better to pop a testicle, damage a mammary gland, or gouge an eye than die. It sounds like common sense, but it's forgotten a lot when confronted with such a unique situation. Story 25. If you are stabbed or impaled and the offending object is still in your body, do not pull it out. Doing so can make you bleed out. I have seen a lot of people who believe this is a myth and natural instinct says to pull out something that puncturing you, but this is extremely important. Leave it in until a medical professional can remove it. If the object goes in the body and smoothly, it will more than likely create a wound internally that is almost identical in size to the object, so it essentially acts as a plug. 
If it is pulled out, any blood vessels that are cut will no longer have the knife's edges pressing against them and they will begin to bleed. If you pull it out and don't notice a lot of blood, the bleeding could be internal so you wouldn't even realize that you are bleeding. You could also do some serious damage pulling out the object. My wife is a trauma surgeon and has had people cut organs pulling out knives or other sharp objects. Story 26. Vegas Route 91 Survivor Here. When in a crowd full of people and gunshots are going off. It's important to try and understand what's happening. So many bystanders were frozen and poor girls and guys couldn't or wouldn't move. I was one of those people. Thankfully I had my wife by my side to push me and tell me we need to go. As you run and see wounded, the adrenaline kicks in and you'll run faster than you ever could imagine. When the barge of bullets would go off, we would fall to the ground and I would jump on top of her. When they stopped, we would run again and repeat if we heard the barrage again. Two of the three times we stopped, we had a metal fence or bar to lay behind. The third time was the scariest as we were hopeless in the middle of an asphalt parking lot. Someone said it perfectly, act and assess the situation so you can get out of harm's way, panic and cry after. God bless the 58 souls taken that night. I hope no one has to experience this and it's said this comment even has to be considered in today's world we live in. Story 27. Metal handcuffs in the bedroom can cause serious nerve damage, so don't use them. Any tingling sensation means that it needs to come off immediately and medical attention may be necessary. Buy good fabric handcuffs that can be tightened and loosened to your comfort level from an adult boutique and have a quick release latch. Story 28. If you get caught in a forest fire, find an area of dried grass without many trees around. Burn the grass, somehow, and lay in the patch of burnt grass. It's your best chance at survival. Story 29. Just delete your old social media accounts from when you were younger if you know you're an idiot. Whether or not you think you didn't post something dumb, you probably did. Yeah, everything stays on the internet, but why be an open book? People love to use Twitter to take down people these days. Story 30. Don't pour water on a grease fire. One of the many things I watched on TV as a kid were Elvis Presley movies. In one of his movies he has a date with a girl in her apartment. She cooks a roast in the oven for their dinner. Elvis arrives and the food is burning. Flames are shooting out of the oven. She makes a move to throw water on the fire, but Elvis stops her and grabs a container of salt and throws handfuls of salt onto the fire which promptly puts it out. One day I'm sitting in the living room when I hear my mother yell from the kitchen. I race there and flames are leaping out of the broiler. Huge grease fire. Almost as high as the stove itself. Mother makes a move to throw water on it, but remembering how Elvis did it, I stop her. Then I grab a container of salt and throw handfuls of salt onto the fire which immediately extinguishes the flames within seconds. Mother looks at me with a surprised expression on her face and she asks me, how did you know to do that? Thanks, Elvis. Thank you very much. Story 31. If you are being questioned by the police and not arrested or detained, you are able to leave whenever you want. If you are arrested, shut the heck up. Just shut the heck up and ask for a lawyer. Story 32. If you have a squeezing, tight sensation in the middle of your chest that travels up the jaw and shoulders, or down the left arm, chew up an aspirin and wash it down with water and then call emergency services. You are likely having a heart attack and aspirin is known to thin the blood enough to save your life. Yes, it could be a panic attack as well, as someone with wicked anxiety, the symptoms are unfortunately very close. I've taken that embarrassing ER trip as well, they said not to worry and how common it was for people to come in having panic attacks instead of heart attacks. Story 33. If you ever get held at gunpoint and asked to get in a vehicle, you fight with everything you've got to not do that. Run zigzag, punch and kick, do whatever even if you die in the process. Because 99% of the time, people who get in the car do not come back. Especially if being moved from a public place to a private place. Story 34. Time is a great healer. Don't give up on yourself. The lowest point in your life is only the start of life getting better. Story 35. My brother went to New Orleans with his buddy and their girlfriends. While walking around they get stopped by the huge black guy in a crisp white suit and he says this. I'm gonna give your kids some rules to follow while you're here. 1. Never leave your drinks unattended. Everyone will try to put she in there, even the bartenders. 
Two, you boys don't ever let your girls walk alone on these streets, even with a weapon. They might get taken. Three, if you're walking down a neighborhood and you don't see any children wandering around, leave immediately. If it's not safe enough for the kids, it ain't safe for you. Four, if you'll wanna buy some crack I got some. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to Thread Talk for more content like this. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss out. Have a dope day and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers!